All right. Well, hey, good morning, esteemed town youth. It's so awesome to be able to connect with you guys. Hey, uh, some good news, and we're going to talk about this a little bit tonight on our call, but I think this might be our last online week. Uh, we are looking at coming together next week, uh, and if next week doesn't work out, definitely going to be shooting for two weeks from now. Uh, so know that our, our quarantine time away from each other for youth group is hopefully about to come to an end, and we'll talk about this tonight on our phone call. Uh, but just wanted to share with you all that that is what we're looking at. Hey, uh, for one of our last weeks, I, uh, sorry, my phone was ringing. That, that was distracting. For one, for, for one of our, if not our last week online, uh, I wanted to take some time and look at a passage out of my favorite book of the, uh, book of the Bible, which is the book of James. Um, and what I want to look at this morning is this idea of having an active faith or being transformed by your faith. Um, James, James talks about uh, this really foundational idea that when we hear and receive the gospel, our lives should change because of it. I want you guys to think about this. Uh, let's pretend, uh, let's pretend that you drink way too much soda every single day. Um, this is coming from a true story, so I've seen this happen. Um, I had a friend who was drinking too much soda every single day, uh, like six to eight cans of soda, so a lot of soda, a lot of sugar, and all the fun stuff that goes in soda. Um, he was an athlete, and he kept breaking bones, and they couldn't really figure out why, why do your bones keep breaking? Like breaking easier than a bone should be breaking. Um, went to the doctor, and it turns out, because of all the soda he was drinking, his bones were deteriorating. And so because of that, they just weren't as strong, and they just broke easier. And so the doctor told him, hey, if you want to not severely injure your body and permanently do damage, you have to stop drinking soda. And so my friend had one of two options. He, he, he heard this word, he heard this message, right? He understood it like drinking more soda, gonna shatter my body. <laughs> so he had to make the decision. A am I gonna take this to heart? If I understand this, is it going to change my actions? Am I gonna stop drinking soda so that my body can heal and I can stop breaking bones? Now for him, he did stop drinking soda. Uh, I haven't talked to him in years, but I do know for a very long time that he did not drink soda. He cut it out completely, switched to sparkling water, you know, like that carbonation. But the point is, he, he heard the message and he understood it and it transforms his life. And so that's what we're going to look at this morning is this idea of uh, does the gospel change your life? Are you a different person because of your faith? in Jesus. So grab your Bible, go to James chapter 1, and we're going to go to verse 19. And I'm going to read this here. James chapter 1 verse 19. Know this, my dear brothers and sisters, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to grow angry. This is because an angry person doesn't produce God's righteousness. Therefore, with humility, Set aside all moral filth and the growth of wickedness and welcome the word. So when it says the word, that means the gospel. So the whole, mess, the whole good news message of the Bible is the word. Welcome the word planted deep inside you, the very word that is able to save you. You must be doers of the word and not only hearers of uh, who mislead themselves. Those who hear... But do not do the word or like those that, that who look at their faces in the mirror. They look at themselves, walk away, and immediately forget what they were like. But there are those who study the perfect law, the law of freedom, and continue to do it. They don't listen and then forget, but they put, into, put it into practice in their lives. They will be blessed in whatever they do. If those who claim devotion to God don't control what they say, they mislead themselves. Their devotion is worthless. 
true devotion, the kind that is pure and faultless before God the Father, is this, to care for the orphans and widows and their difficulties and to keep the world from contaminating us. This, this passage personally shaped my life when I was an early Christian. When we come to faith in Jesus, a lot of times it's, you know, we, we almost limit our experience to that first day of becoming a Christian. You know, and it's totally worth celebrating over. The Bible tells us that when someone comes to faith in Christ, the angels are celebrating in heaven with us. That, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty awesome party. But for a Christian, for our life as believers, it just doesn't stop on day one. Rather, that gospel news that we have heard and accepted ought to transform our lives. No longer are we to live in the way that we used to live, but now because we have understood what Jesus has done for us on the cross, when we understand the message of the Bible, when we understand that we are saved in Christ because of our faith in him, that we are a new creation, that we're called citizens of heaven, all these phrases that the Bible uses about believers is to get us to recognize that we have a new life that we ought to live. That when we hear the gospel, we should do the gospel. And it's this really amazing concept that I don't think we, we discuss about, uh, discuss a lot in the world church, or at least the American church. So I want you to look at this part, and this is 22. This is kind of the central part. You must be doers of the word and not only hearers who mislead themselves. And listen to this analogy James uses. Those who hear but don't do are like those who look at their face in a mirror. They look at themselves, walk away, and immediately forget what they look like. So for us as Christians, it would be the same as studying the Bible. It would be the same as, as praying and, and listening to these lessons and going to church and, and understanding or seeking to understand what it means to follow Jesus. But then right after youth group, right after Sunday, right after reading even a big chapter of the Bible, we completely forget what it says or what's been said. We're not impacted by it. It doesn't change us in any way. And our life has really no evidence of any understanding. So what James is saying is, as Christians, when we continue to grow in the gospel message, when we continue to grow in what the Bible says is true and what is um, best for our lives, if we read or if we listen, if we hear and we just don't apply, we're just going to be like someone who looks at ourselves in the mirror, walks away and has completely forgotten what we look like. I don't know if you guys have ever done this. I do this every day where I'll pull out my phone, I'll look at the time. I'm like, all right, it's 11 o'clock. Put my phone back in, and immediately I'm like, what time was it? And I look back, and I'm like, all right, it's 11 o'clock. And I'll do this three or four times, and a quick 10, I'm like, oh my gosh, I already forgot. You know, for me, I'm reading that time. I see what it says. I know it says 11 o'clock. I know what that means. I just, I'm not taking it in. I'm not understanding it. I'm not really considering, hey, it is 11 o'clock in the morning. That means blank, 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 whatever it is for my day at 11 a.m. And the same is true for our faith and reading the Bible and growing and listening and being sharpened by our faith in Jesus. If we only hear but do not do, we will not be transformed by our faith. And James goes on throughout the whole of this letter discussing this idea of having an active faith. Look here, down at verse 26. If those who claim devotion to God don't control what they say, they mislead themselves. Their devotion is worthless. True devotion, the kind that is pure and faultless before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows and their difficulties and to keep the world from contaminating us. There's this amazing theme that goes throughout the whole of the Bible. 
And it's talking about the coming kingdom of God and us living in this kingdom. And the kingdom of God focuses on love for our neighbor, care for the orphan and the widow, doing justice, loving mercy, being devoted to God. All these things are part of what it means to follow Jesus well. And so James is pointing that out. James is pointing out this new kingdom lifestyle, saying if you're not speaking differently because of your faith, if you're not acting differently because of your faith, if you're not serving and loving others unconditionally in this world, uh, when, when he says orphans and widows in, that, in the society that James is writing to, they were the lowest of the low. They were the, uh, I have a note here, it says, orphans and widows in the Old Testament symbolize the most unfortunate members of society. This is not the beautiful world of nature, but the world of human beings who have rejected God. So because we have orphans and widows, that means that we are in a, it just points out that we are in a broken world. That as Christians, we are called to be part of the healing process of this broken world. And that means caring for the least of society, loving those who are in dire need of love and care. If your life has not been transformed by your faith, you need to ask yourself, why? Have I really understand what the gospel message is? Sorry, have I understood? It was poor grammar. My fault. Have I understood what the gospel message is? Have I taken to heart the things that Jesus calls me to do, to love mercy, to do justice in this world, to care for others, to be humble in spirit, to go out and, and maintain self-control, to make disciples, to spread the message of the gospel, to tell others about Jesus. Do these things become evident in our life as we grow in our faith? As you read the Bible, do you understand like a person who looks at themselves in a mirror better what they look like? Or are you continually looking in a mirror, walking away, and forgetting what you look like? It's been funny. Over the years, uh, I've been able to grow a little bit more facial hair. And I've learned that for some reason, right here, it just, it just doesn't connect. I don't know why. It just doesn't. Uh, so at first, I remember over the years, you know, I, you know, I would do this, and I'd feel my face, and I'd be like, oh, it's, it's black right there. Oh, that's right. That's right. There's a bald spot. <laughs> I'd look in the mirror and be like, right, there it is. And now I know that when I walk away from the mirror, I can just envision my face and I'm like, okay, I just know that there's just nothing going on right there. That sucks, but it's okay. Right? But I've maintained this idea of what I look like. I understand what's going, <laughs> what's going on with this goatee region and why when I do this, I don't feel hair right here. And for us, I know it's a weird analogy, but it's the same thing for our faith that when we, when we grow and when we're shaped by our faith, when we learn what this Bible says for our lives, we can then understand better who we are in Christ and we can apply that to our lives. We can act on it. We know where we're at. We understand our, um, like how the gospel is shaping our lives. Are you changed by the gospel? My, my challenge to you guys is this. I want you to take a little bit of time. I want you to take some time today and, and just think about your life before Jesus. And now, if you have come to faith, think about where you are now. I want you guys to consider how your life has changed. And then what I want you to do is think on a, on a, on a micro scale, right? We, we just read the Bible, right? If you, if you were reading along with me, we just read a few verses of God's word together. How has this impacted you? Are you taking these words that you just read and are they right now shaping your faith? What kind of understanding 
are you taking away from this? How are you able to grow as a Christian understanding these words? How has your perception of who Jesus is changed because of this passage? These are the questions that you need to ask every single time you read the Bible. And we'll discuss this tonight just to get a little bit of practice of, of it. But the main thing is this. We need to welcome the Bible. We need to welcome the Word. We need to welcome the Gospel into our lives. And as we have welcomed God's Word and His good news into our lives, when we understand it and we accept it, we then move to the point of doing it. Doing the Word. Making disciples and growing in our own faith. We'll talk about this tonight. I love you guys so much. Uh, we'll talk also as well uh, about what's coming up in a couple of weeks. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone super soon. Peace out. <laughs>